Hello everyone, and welcome. On August 16th of 2016, I fired up Grand Theft Auto Online for the first time in six months or eight months, something like that. And I got to looking at all of the new content, and I was like, man, it's, it's going to be a really long time before I can grind up enough money in-game to buy even a tenth of this content. And some of the stuff looked really cool, right? So I I did what I usually do when when I'm low on cash in game and there's new stuff I want. I went to Steam and I pulled up the the uh, Megalodon shark card and the other shark cards to see what the prices were so I could drool over them, say I can't afford it and close the page again. Only this time I found that the Megalodon Shark Cash card was on sale. So I went ahead and purchased it. Here's the receipt. Printed off today. Purchased August 16th, 2016 at 11.40 p.m. Grand Theft Auto V Megalodon Shark Cash card. That's $8 million of in-game cash. After purchasing this, I exited the game because the money wasn't appearing in my account in-game. Then I relaunched the game, and when I logged back into Grand Theft Auto Online, I found the $8 million in my account. So I began buying stuff. Um, bought a number of expensive things. One of the, I think I bought the most expensive of the new corporate offices. I, yeah, I bought a new uh, apartment. Um, I can't remember if I bought any cars. I think I did buy and then sell one car that evening because I didn't like it. Um, I bought a few other things. I can't remember everything. I know there was one warehouse that I bought to go along with the uh, the corporate offices so I could do the missions. And after three or four hours of playing, I decided to log off. And as I was going back to my apartment to log off, I was greeted with a lovely message that I'd been banned from the game. And for those who have been banned from GTA Online before, you know that Rockstar does not care. They won't even talk to you if you've been banned. And as far as I know, I violated no terms of service. Um, I have never ever used a mod or a cheat in multiplayer. And so the next time I logged in after the 10-day ban had expired, I got banned again after about four hours of gameplay, I think. And Rockstar again refused to talk to me, refused to discuss the issue with me. So I contacted the Better Business Bureau, and I currently have a complaint open with them. And Rockstar has finally, after going back and forth a couple of times, said that they're accusing me of cheating. And so I am making this video to prove, A, that I'm not cheating, B, that I'm getting banned without violating any terms of service. And uh, in order to prove that, because let's face it, it's hard to prove you're not cheating, we're going to use multi-hasher. And we are going to copy all of the files in here into multi-hasher. Now what that will do is it will run a mathematical algorithm on every single file in the folder. So it'll give us a list of all of the files, and it'll give us that hash as a product of the mathematical algorithm. It runs through the hash is unique for every file. It will always come out the same for the same file. So if I, for instance, just drag this file in here, here's the hash. We're using SHA-1 or SHA-1. Now if I remove this, and I drag the file in again, we get the same hash. We'll get the ha same hash every time we run this algorithm on this same file. So we know if the file's modified, if the hash comes out different. Rockstar Games and anybody at home can use this same method to verify that all of these files are legitimate and original files. And since I'm dragging everything in the folder into multi-hasher, We'll get to see everything that's in the folder. 
And when I'm done with this, I will make this list available to uh, anybody who wants to download it and look at it. Now we're just going to do a quick control A. But before we do that, let's go into the folder and search options and show. I have it set to show hidden files. And just for the sake of argument, I'm going to turn off hide protected operating system files so that no one can accuse me of having hidden anything in the game folder. I'm going to hit F5 to refresh real quick. And we're going to do this Control All to select all and just drag everything. Now, we can see on these smaller files, multi-hasher is going very quickly. As it gets to these larger ones, it's going to go very slowly. We can see for each of these files, we have a different hash. And the hashes are unique for each file. Each time a file changes, the hash changes. This is going to be a great way to verify that the files are all legitimate. I'm going to let this run until it's done because I want everyone to see on video me saving the file and I'm going to get a hash for the file so that people can see on video a way to verify that I haven't altered the saved list of hashes. So let's give this a few minutes to run. Some of these files are two gigabytes or more, so this is going to take a good four or five minutes, I think. If I was allowed to use the Jeopardy music, I would.
Okay, we're done. We can see all of the hashes in the list down here at the bottom. Let's make that bigger. There's an awful lot of files in the game folder. Let's bring this back down here. We can go ahead and save this list. I'm going to save two copies of it. The first copy is going to be in the multi-hasher XML format for anyone who uses this tool. Then the second copy I'm going to save in Microsoft File Checksum Integrity Verifier format. I'm going to go ahead and remove everything from the list. I'm going to take both of these files, drag them in here. That unfortunately didn't do what I wanted it to. We don't need hashes on all of the files we've already checked. Yeah, that's not going to work, is it? Well, let's get Internet Explorer open. We'll use VirusTotal. It'll give us ashes. Okay, there's a shade 256 hash. Once it's done, it's supposed to have hashes in here, but it might be confused since it's a list of hashes. There we go. MD5, SHA1, SHA256, etc. So that information can be used to verify that I have not altered this list of hashes in between now and when you view it. I'll put the link to download this file in the video description. And you can use VirusTotal to verify it's the same file. I'm going to do that with both files. Now you can see right off the bat, the hashes for each file are different. May take a minute for it to load all of the hashes here. It has to wait for each tool to run to give it the hashes. Yeah, you can see as I switch back and forth between the tabs, the hashes are different because the files are different. So this is the second one, the XML file, Microsoft Integrity Verifier, or whatever it was called. So these are the hashes for it. These are the hashes for the multi-hasher file. So you can verify on VirusTotal that these are the same files. You can see the analysis date and time when you upload the file to VirusTotal. 
it should tell you that this was the original analysis date and time. And you should get the exact same hashes. So now that we've verified that the files are the same, let's ver verify that there are no other running processes. Now we can use Process Explorer from Microsoft. Just run down and look at all of the running processes real quick. You'll see a few things in here like the Splash Top Streamer service, No Machine, both of those are remote access software. These files are from my audio drivers, the Asus Sonar Phobus. They're uh, C Media, or at least this one is uh, C Media related because it uses a C Media chipset. Vivaldi is a web browser based on Chromium. No machine again. VMware, which isn't running at the moment. And I can save this list as a text file. And I'll put a link in the description of the video for that as well. And on top of that, we can get out multi-hasher. Or you know what? It might just be easier for everyone to validate these files if they're on virus total. So let's do it that way. wasn't what I was wanting. There we go, processes.txt. Once this is done, we'll have all of the hashes and anybody can verify the file just by uploading it to VirusTotal or using their own hashing software, multi-hasher, or some other program that generates hashes. You can see that those are different from the others as well. So I'll make sure to put a link in the video description to that file so that every, everyone can view it and verify that it is indeed the same file. Let's take a look at it real quick. It's basically just a list of everything that Process Explorer showed, every running process. Um, it's tab delimited, I do believe. Yes, it is. That means if you open it in Microsoft Excel or another spreadsheet program and select tab delimited, it'll show it in a spreadsheet format that'll be easier to read. But you can see everything that was running on my computer at the time that I saved that file. Now that I've collected evidence that proves I'm not cheating, there's no extra files in the game folder. All of the game files have been validated. And I've saved a list of running processes so that everyone can check and see exactly what was in the game folder, can validate all of the hashes, can validate all of my running processes and see I'm not using a cheating program. Now we're going to run the game. Please don't tell me their service is offline. I didn't bother checking. Okay, we're signed in. The game is launching. And very shortly, I will be switching to 
game capture mode. Okay. We've switched. Oh, come on. Twitch? There we go. I should say OBS, not Twitch. I'm capturing with OBS Studio. I'm only switching to full screen app mode because it's more efficient. It won't it won't interfere with the frame rate as much. You'll still be able to see anything I see in game. If I have a cheat menu, those are rendered in game, at least as far as I know. I'm not aware of any program that operates outside of the game that can influence things like money, for instance. Maybe in single player or trainer, but I don't think there's anything for multiplayer that can do that. You have to actually spawn things in the world using a script in the game engine. Okay. Let's go ahead and buy something first of all before we do anything else. Because I've been told that if you buy and sell something with money that the game thinks you've gained by cheating, that that will trigger a ban. So let's just go ahead and buy a cheap car. How much do I have? Two hundred ninety or eighty nine thousand. Sorted by price by default, so we'll scroll down to the bottom. You know, I don't think they're actually sorted by price. Okay, there we go. <laughs> There's a free car. That's funny. All right, one hundred thousand for the Porsche. Let's go for it. I don't have a Porsche yet. Which garage should I have this put in? Oh, I have to select a color. It's listed in blue. We'll go with blue. I think this is the one we're in right now. I'm not sure how long it takes. Let's go take a look and see if it's there. If it is, we'll immediately drive down to the uh, to the auto shop and sell it. Nope, it's not here. So let's go outside and run around for a few minutes. Frame rate is not particularly spectacular. 30 frames or less. In 
in CPU usage on OBS is almost 50. <laughs> almost 50 percent. So the game performance may be less than stellar. I'm not sure how long it takes them to deliver the car. Don't have a mouse. That's disconcerting. I still don't have a car either. I got money too, motherfucker. You saw. I don't want no beef. Let's just go run around the building until the car gets delivered. If it doesn't get delivered, we'll go for a little drive. Ah, oh, there we go. Guess they just wanted me to go for a run. What on earth is going on over there? The NPCs in this game get themselves into so much trouble. Oh, hey. I think somebody's trying to kill me. Looked at the mini map and there was an APC sitting next to me. Ah, there we are. Okay. Let's go sell this thing. Let's make sure the radio is off. Okay, good. I don't want any copyright violations. Come on, game. We were just outside. You can load it. Apparently not. Oh, there we go. Is that Franklin's voice? Man, things are pretty choppy. I swear OBS Studio's gotten less efficient. Sometimes I want to go back to OBS because it captured faster. It killed my frame rate less. Okay, where's the... Uh... This way. Yeah, I went uh, a couple blocks too far. I guess it's been just long enough since I've played this that what I forgot the exact today? route to the uh, garage or the auto shop. Wait a minute. Sell. There we go. So I'm only going to get 60%. They have to have music in here. Vehicle sold. Okay. There we go. I'm going to get a copyright strike on my account for that. Let's go find a vehicle. Oh, the one driving away there would have been good. No matter what I steal, I'm probably going to have to run from the police. So I'd like to get something fast. This isn't super fast, but it's better than nothing. Whoa, no music. Copyright strikes. Don't need those on my account. Okay, so we've bought and sold a car. So let's go back to the penthouse garage, get a vehicle, start playing the game normally, and wait for the ban to happen. Because every time I've logged in and played, 
even after cleaning out the game folder and letting Steam reinstall all the files, which I've done again, I always end up getting banned. Ever since buying that Megalodon shark card off of Steam. Yeah, definitely get one of my cars. Somebody up there in the uh, chat. And chances are that they're not up there just for the air. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. I'm kind of partial to classics. There's no music on, right? Nope, there's music. Need to turn that off. Okay. Let's just queue up for a heist or something. That'll let us drive around while we wait. Hopefully we don't have too much in the way of performance trouble. It's certainly trying to give us problems, isn't it? This is pretty choppy. I'm used, used to much smoother driving in this game. Of course, if half of my processing power wasn't taken up by my streaming software, wouldn't be that bad now, would it? You can see why I wanted to change capture modes for the game if we had stayed on full screen capture mode. This would be unplayable. Alright, we've got three out of four in the lobby. Once we get four, it'll auto join. Whoops. The game started kind of freezing and stuttering there. Series A Coke, that's an easy one. Board a plane, kill a bunch of uh, college frat boys who were doing Coke, and steal their drugs. I'm sorry, did I say board a plane? I meant a boat. What the hell was I thinking? Man, this is choppy. The frame rate's not bad. You guys can't see my frame rate counter. It's over 30 at the moment, which is playable, but with OBS eating up nearly half my CPU time, there's not enough left for the game to run smoothly. Which is sad, because I have a Core i7. Maybe I should have reapplied my overclock. Armor, please, thank you. I feel that guy's pain. It is difficult to tell what channel the radio's on in your house. Um, that's fine. <laughs> we'll just go with the standard black. Um, where's my Infernus? That's a pretty good car. It's an easy car to drive when the game's not performing well. Even if the McLaren, the, uh, I can't remember what they call it, T something 20, 620 maybe. Or maybe it was T92. That car's faster and more maneuverable, but it's a little more difficult to drive when the game gets choppy. car. Down here somewhere. I don't actually remember who it was I was supposed to go with. 
<laughs> Everybody has those little Korean cars. Alright. Well, it didn't bother giving us a map marker to our objective. Ooh, restroom attendant. I'm not going to be there first this time. There's no way with this choppiness. Right there. I hate having to fight the camera in this game. Wish they'd just let me set the camera where I want it and leave it there. Man, this is choppy. fly or not. As choppy as this is, I'm not sure I'd be able to shoot well. Let's make sure there's no... Oh no, there's no music by default in Heist. You get the generic elevator music, which is actually kind of loud at the moment. Alright, is this up? Oh yeah, that's right. There we go. To remember how to fly there for a moment. Whose helicopter was that? It's sad that flying with the keyboard is so much easier than with the mouse. I need to take a few lessons from the Arma games. Arma 2 it was so easy to fly, and it's even easier in Arma 3. Turn, they're going to get killed. Sit this thing down if we can. Oh my, that's going to explode. Come on, get a gun out. <laughs> I think that was my fault. They really needed to get out of the helicopter. Not much I could do about that once I sat down. Let's see. Armor. Quick restart. It's kind of a funny button. I wonder what page up is bound to that would cause that to be the quick restart key. Oh, now it thinks I should have a weapon. Alright, let's try with the mouse this time. So we have to hold the button down. There we go. It's not too terrible, but it's nowhere near as good as Arma. Alright, they're there already. Oh, nice. Whatever gun they've got out this time is doing a decent job. 
Oh, it's not actually killing them, it's just knocking them over. I think they're shooting with a pistol. More guys up there. <laughs> How many guys are gonna. Oh, they jumped. Well, I guess it's time to land. It's the same guy that died last time. Is that the guy that's going with me? I don't think it is. This is pretty normal in this mission. Most people don't know how to do it. 